Rank 1 in Korea has close to 1800 LP, and thanks to the 1118 changes, his main champion got buffed this patch, and we are going to show you two hyper carry games in which he just pops the heck off. What's up, Game Looper? The gist back at it, and I am keen as mustard to show you this gameplay, and I know lots of you don't play Zoe, but this dude is the best player in the hardest region in the world, and this is who he plays. And even if you don't play Zoe or main mid, the next 10 or so minutes will still be incredibly valuable. And if you do want more high elo guys like these, let us know by smashing the like button. So let's go. Now, we're going to breeze through the laning phases of both games first. And in this first game against Akshan, you can see that Zoe is getting pushed in. So Rank 1's main aim here is to trim the wave by auto attacking and queuing the minions so they don't crash into his tower. If it still does in this game, no biggie, just get as many as you can. Now, one important mechanic to know about for Zoe is that when you use an ability, your next auto attack deals bonus magic damage. So when Rank 1 presses a Q, he auto attacks. This deals more damage. And after queuing again, even his next auto attack benefits from his passive. Now, the wave eventually resets, but Rank 1 one is going to high key troll this next trade. Now, when Zoe auto attacks Akshan here, he procs his bone plating. So if he was to keep fighting while this is active, it's very likely he loses the fight. Not only that, but Akshan's shield comes back off cooldown. And the only reason you would risk a trade like this is if you were trying to bait the enemy mid laner for your jungler. Otherwise, it's going to end badly like it does here. Now, Rank 1 decides to stay because he wants a bit more gold for an item who hasn't done this before. So even more so here, when you're on low HP, your positioning has to be deliberate. This is why Rank 1 holds the high side of the mid lane because this side is warded and if he does get ganked the enemy jungler will do it from the bot side this allows him to farm the next way safely and he is able to base now zoe is going to take on a very similar fight here with akshan but the big difference here is that zoe actually has her q ready to combo with her e but from akshan's point of view as well it really looks as if the enemy jungler is nearby with the way zoe is moving up like a lunatic so you have to respect it this allows rank one to get in a nice big chunk but he then gives up this pressure in a soon to be level six to run 20 seconds to bot lane. The more consistent way of playing is to shove the wave out first and then roam so you don't miss as many minions. Now he gets one kill but dies, so how does he still hard carry this game? Well, for every single minion wave from level 6 onwards, rank 1 pushes, simply because Zoe's pushing power is nuts, and this gives you the chance to poke your opponent under their tower and roam around the map. Now if we fast forward to this situation, Akshan suddenly appears, but there is nothing to fear, simply because Zoe still has her E. So when Akshan gets real close, rank 1 can put him to sleep and deal a lot of damage. Now for any mage player out there, this is critical. You are always going to have one ability to protect yourself against these assassins that look to kill you. Do not waste it. Now, Zoe is about to help her jungler get a triple kill, and can you see the difference between this roam and the one before to the bot lane? She shoves the wave, yes, so she isn't missing golden experience for moving on the map. Now, when she arrives in the top lane and Zack jumps in, notice how she saves her E for a more optimal target, this being Lilia. So she uses her ultimate to get closer, allowing her to land her sleep, and Viego finishes off the slam dunk and kills Akshan shortly after. Now, Rank 1 returns to the mid lane to shove out a wave because he needs that gold again, and then roams to the bot lane to pick up two kills of his own. Again though, this play is as good as it can be because he shoved the mid wave before moving elsewhere. Now this game is about to open up and go crazy, so after clearing these minions, the wave is going to reset. But until it does, Zoe has free time to get in a position for this ensuing fight. Now lots of mid laners will run straight down into the river through this choke point, but it's super risky because you can get ambushed and you're not with your team. So Rank 1 runs all the way around so he is behind his front line, and this position he is in, he can still deal damage, but he's not going to cop any damage. Now his team wins the fight, and all of a sudden, the enemy Shen decides to stay despite having two teammates dead. Well, this is because he is trying to bait the Yasuo because Senna is in this river brush waiting for that commitment. So always try to read between the lines when you see someone who is technically inting if they were on their own. Even if it is Chovy on Senna, he can't stop Zoe from getting a free kill. Now when Zoe runs out of base shortly after, we have to choose the lane with the wave closest to us and the lane which is free. So bot lane here because it is pushing into this tower and none of Zoe's teammates are farming it, Rank 1 picks up the CS. Now after clearing the next wave, you might be like, why doesn't he farm the next one as well? Well, in the mid to late game map, awareness is everything. Even though Zoe's team has excellent vision in the enemy jungle, what about these bot lane brushes, or the river brush, or the enemy tri brush? Zack could be waiting with Akshan and it would be all over. So instead, Zoe goes mid to group with her team and they are about to kill the enemy Zack. But look where Zoe stands during this, behind her Viego and so far away that if she did get jumped on, the enemy team would be hella over overextending. This positioning again is huge. If Lol Wiki says you're a ranged champion, you play like a ranged champion. Now coming out of base here, same question. Where should Zoe run? Well, the top wave is closing in on this second tier tower and no one is farming it. So top lane is the correct answer. But then rank one makes a questionable decision because at this stage of a game, clearing waves takes virtually no time at all. Shoving waves and then roaming becomes even more efficient. But instead of doing that here, Zoe decides to head immediately to this fight. Now it's not the worst play in the world, but how she spaces in this fight is kind of troll. So 
when Akshan appears, obviously he is the primary target. Now her Q hits the Scuttle Crab, which sucks, and she does miss her E, but as you can see, it's still not that bad. But look where Rank 1 places his character when Senna appears. She stands in between two enemy threats. So instead of moving back up towards the river or even past Akshan, Zoe is taking damage from two sources, and this is why Rank 1 dies during this. But this next fight is why this dude is the nuts. He stays full HP for its entire duration, all because of how he positions. So when both teams are having a dance off in the mid lane, Zoe is standing opposite the closest enemy champion. In this scenario, Lilia is the main threat, so he hugs this bottom wall close to his tower. Now suddenly, every enemy champion is where the Lilia was, so he stays on the low side of this mid lane, giving his opponent zero chance of catching him out. This means he can deal as much damage as he can, and even if Lilia puts him to sleep, he's in no danger at all because of where he is standing. By staying this healthy during this exchange because of that positioning, he can pick up the kill on Shen, and when he runs back onto the map, you can see that bot lane is the most pushed lane, but Mundo is already farming it. But Zoe doesn't have any other place to farm safely, so he decides to try team up with Mundo to kill the Lilia who is pushing up, and he does just that. Now just a quick tip, when you are fighting, always aim for those key targets who are going to deal damage. So in this picture, Senna is more important than Shen. So Zoe throws her Q out at an angle, and when she ults forward, she chunks Chovy. This not only improves your team's chances of picking up more kills, but also keeps them safe, because you are eliminating the enemy's damage output. Now in the second game, Rank 1 dies under his tower here, but he still manages to pop off and carry, and then he makes the same move he made in the first game. Instead of shoving the wave before roaming, he roams with minions sitting in the mid lane. As a result, he misses this entire wave, but he redeems himself by making the right decision here. He shoves, then roams top, and gets two kills. Now if we skip to another clip in which Rank 1 gets another kill by roaming correctly, when these minions hit the deck, the next wave will still take a few seconds to reset. So Zoe uses this time to roam towards these overextended enemy champions in the top lane, and after landing his bubble and timing his flash with the second part of his Q, he kills the Greys. So there's a real pattern emerging here, and guess what? This is going to continue. Rank 1 stays top and shoves out the wave because Lucian is going mid, and after pushing out these minions, he then roams towards his jungler and helps him pick up another kill. And what does he lose for it? Nothing, that's right. He then cleans up the mid lane and Bs. Now Rank 1 is going to get another kill here, but it's important to know once again his positioning before Thresh dies, because when Thresh runs towards Zoe's team like a madman, it means one thing. He wants to engage. So look at the distance between Rank 1 and Thresh. It's bigger than the diff between NA and EU. And Zoe can still deal damage while taking zero damage. Now this fight carries on and another invaluable lesson can be taught here. We have mentioned in this video how big target selection is. But remember, the enemy team will have their own target selection as well. So as this fight plays out, the enemy team focuses everyone but Zoe. So Rank 1 does not run away because he knows he is free to deal as much damage as possible. Lots of lower level players will just book it, even though they are full HP and the enemy team has no interest in them. Now upon returning to the mid lane, can you see the pattern? The wave is in reset mode, so Zoe again uses this time to rendezvous with her teammates and will soon kill Graze. Now just a tip, when you are playing a skill shotter, operating from Fog of War is essential. If you stand out in the open, it's way too easy to miss everything, so make your life easier by staying concealed, and this allows Zoe to kill Graze not once, but twice. When Amumu lands his toss, Zoe cues from behind this wall, ults forward and gets the kill. But in this clip, she makes a criminal mistake. She gets way too close to the enemy champions when she should really be standing well away from any possible engage, like she has done in most of these clips. Thresh lands a good hook and she gives up a thousand gold bounty. Now this last fight is one of the cleanest you will ever see, it's perfection. So before the fight takes place, Zoe is standing well away from any random engage, and once the fight actually starts, she can capitalize on that initial headbutt. So she kills Thresh, but if I pause it here, there is an argument to be made that she should ult forward to try put the Rise or Graze to sleep, and her Q would be back up to damage them. But protecting this mid to late game Kaiser from Silas is more important, so rank 1 lands her bubble on Silas, and this keeps Kaiser alive for the rest of the fight. Now after missing her Q on Graze by a Whisker, now it's scary. Graze and Rise are both running at Zoe, but look how she escapes Rise's range while maintaining contact with Graze. This means that when Rise actually does catch up, Graze cannot be a part of this fight because he's too low, and rank 1 ends up making a sick play and takes out the Rise. Kaiser eventually kills the Graze, who's Zoe got incredibly low, and that is how the rank 1 player in Korea dominates games on such a low win rate champion. So if he can do it at this level, you can too if you take these tips with you. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our future daily content. And also make sure to unhard suck yourself by signing up to the Game Week website linked in the description and comment section. The best guides, the best analyses, the best everything. Our exclusive content will help you improve, guaranteed. And until tomorrow's daily upload, this has been the Jizzle.